You can freely entertain any idea without accepting it. You can contemplate absurd notions while still remaining grounded. It can be of value to think over these ideas. That is, in a sense, what fiction is. Hypothetical thinking without buying into it is true. John Keel was an interesting person with fascinating ideas and perspectives. You don't have to agree with him to be entertained by the ideas he put forward. John Keel is the author of the Mothman Prophecies, as well as other books, such as The Eighth Tower and The Complete Guide to Mysterious Beings. In his books, he would cover strange stories that people had reported and tell of his experiences looking into them. He embraced the absurdity of it all instead of shying away from it. His commentary was often humorous and thought-provoking. Keel puzzled over many of the same questions that people still puzzle over today and seek to understand. So an effort to comprehend his unique perspectives allow us to journey into the mind of John Keel. There are categories of study when it comes to the weird things that people report to see. Among these fields there are different prevailing conclusions. UFOlogy is the study of unidentified flying objects, and the prevailing conclusion among them seems to be the ET hypothesis, which states that beings from other planets are the explanation. John Keel heavily disagreed with this. He stated, I have come to reject outright the popular extraterrestrial hypothesis. The UFO phenomenon itself is only one trivial fragment of a much larger phenomenon. When it comes to monsters, there's cryptozoology, which is the study of unknown animals. Their leading explanation for monster reports is that these things are undiscovered animals from our own biology. Urban legends and folklore can also be a study of strange reports, but tends to be more of a secular passing down of stories, often with the understanding that they are very unlikely to be true. Demons, angels, and spirits have fields such as demonology, as well as paranormal investigators who focus on hauntings. A leading interpretation among them is that these things are dead people or beings from an afterlife. John Keel was a Fortean. He was inspired by the work of Charles Fort, who collected strange reports from newspapers. Instead of focusing on one thing in particular, Charles Fort assembled all kinds of reports of anomalous phenomenon. John Keel later did much the same in a newsletter he edited called Anomaly. Fortean was the word which Keel most often used to describe himself. A Fortean can study UFOs, monsters, demons, ghosts, angels, literally anything strange. And this is basically how John Keel studied. Charles Fort said, One measures a circle, beginning anywhere. And John Keel seemed to have really taken that to heart. He felt that it was necessary to study the entirety of these strange reports, beginning wherever you want but measuring the entirety of these various fields of study. In 1966, John Keel first began studying reports of unidentified flying objects in hopes of understanding what was going on. He began taking a step further by doing investigative journalism and traveling around the country interviewing people who claimed to have seen lights in the sky. He was attempting to do an article on the subject, but eventually his efforts grew into an entire book titled Operation Trojan Horse, which he released in 1970. He made the conscious effort to not have any preconceived notions going into it. He did not begin with a foregone conclusion, but instead tried to remain objective and figure out why people were reporting such things. Keel's personal motto that he lived by was, belief is the enemy. Keel was extremely against beliefs and adjust his way of doing things to avoid forming them. This contributed to him expanding his study from not just UFOs, but to any and all types of strangeness. He's quoted as saying, Separating and studying any single element is not only a waste of time, but will also automatically lead to the development of a belief. If there was a John Keel method, it would probably be something along the lines of this. Investigate any and all anomalous reports to the best of your ability, but never form a belief. Keel began studying reports of monsters, spirits, angels, demons, and other anomalies along with UFOs. He began to notice commonality and universal trends among all these things. One similarity in the narrative of these reports that he noticed was that all these beings seemed to mess with electricity. People would report that their radios or TVs would blank out, or have strange interference during sightings of anything from monsters to UFOs. Another similarity was these beings often reported to glow or have glowing attributes. Over time he began to think it wasn't different phenomenons he was dealing with, but a singular phenomenon. Keel said, All these manifestations clearly share a common source or cause. When you think about Mothman, which is the subject of Keel's most popular and well-known book, you'll notice the legend is pretty much a perfect example of what John Keel is talking about. The Mothman legend of West Virginia features UFOs, men in black, poltergeist activity in the homes of the witnesses, and of course, a monster. All of these things are reported in the same town over a span of time. It illustrates what he's saying about all these things seeming to be connected. The legend falls in line with his way of thinking because one of the reasons for his way of thinking. It informed his thought process. His conclusions are drawn from his personal experience. He picked Point Pleasant, West Virginia as a research point because it was a place where the many manifestations were occurring simultaneously. 
but it seems that through his experience there, he began to think of the manifestations as connected in some way. Keel also incorporates world mythology as something that is a part of the phenomenon. He says these things have been present since the dawn of man, and that when you review the ancient references, you are obliged to conclude that the presence of these objects and beings is a normal condition for this planet. His basic idea is that these things have always been interacting with mankind and the ancient cultures are simply interpreted in a different way. He compares ancient myth with contemporary reports of strange things. He was basically stating that all the different cultures have different names for what is perhaps the same thing. He goes on to say, They have always been here. Perhaps they were here long before we started bashing each other over the head with clubs. If so, they will undoubtedly still be here long after we've incinerated our cities, polluted all the waters, and rendered our very atmosphere unbreathable. Certain religious beings and imagery is also included in Kiel's perspective as a part of the phenomenon. He considers the religious witnesses to simply be interpreting their strange encounters in the way that they understand the world. Religion and world mythology both usually consist of stories from various cultures of a god, god, or supernatural beings. Kiel seemed to consider certain aspects of these stories to be similar to modern reports. He referred to Earth as the Disneyland of the Gods in one of his book titles. He liked to point out the parallels between religious stories or ancient mythology and UFO or monster reports, as if to say, it's nothing new. So Kiel had united all these forms of study in his mind. He threw away the various interpretations given by their fields, and allowed the categories to melt away into a single solitary phenomenon. Obviously the other people who studied these things didn't seem to appreciate his method. They preferred to specialize their efforts, and would much rather go along with the prevailing model of their chosen study field. Also, the difference in opinion among these varying groups seemed much too wide a gap to bridge. Doing so, however, would have more than tripled their sample size of reports, making it at least harder to ignore. Collaborating may have been more fruitful, but the study of the unknown was just too fragmented to be mended into a collaborative effort. Kiel became an outcast among outcasts, but perhaps it made him all the more unique and visionary in his thinking. He didn't subscribe to any established interpretations of what the phenomenon is, or where the manifestations come from, and so instead he had his own personal conclusions. He thought that these entities, ranging from UFOs, monsters, demons, angels, spirits, religious beings, mythological beings, etc., were all simply manifestations of the phenomenon. Even though they had visual variety and differences, he thought of them as the same type of thing, a manifestation. He determined through his own reasoning that these manifested beings seemed to be electromagnetic in origin, because they seemed to mess with electricity and because of the glowing attributes, as well as how they interacted with certain metals and so on. He basically thought that cultures throughout history had interacted with them, each interpreting them and calling them different things, so it wouldn't really matter what you called them. Each culture on the planet seems to have this universal idea of mysterious beings or non-humans from somewhere else. Each culture has its own interpretation. An example of this line of thinking is that his original title for the Mothman Prophecies was The Year of the Garuda. He didn't consider these things to be separate but basically the same, just different cultural interpretations. So when it comes to John Keel's idea on what to call them, he created an umbrella term to summarize all these beings under. He coined the term ultra-terrestrial. Keel was very into radiology, and even had a job as a radiology consultant at one point. Ultraviolet rays exist outside of our visible color spectrum. Perhaps this is why he chose that name for the beings he considered to be just out of reach. Keel said, Once you've established a belief, the phenomenon adjusts its manifestations to support that belief, and thereby escalate it. John Keel described common characteristics of these manifestations. He said that they were trickster beings or cosmic pranksters, playing mischievous games with mankind since its dawn. Keel described Earth as their version of Disneyland, implying that they tricked us or played their games for pure entertainment, although he also sometimes thought they went too far in their jokes and games, by engaging in secondhand harm to the people who they encounter, as well as a morbid dark sense of humor or irony. He noted how human-centric the manifestations seemed to be, at first he thought, why would spacemen follow state roads? And why would dead people come back from beyond the grave just to knock books off a shelf? Most people follow these questions up by saying that the reports are therefore false. John Keel, however, found that these strange activities made more sense as a narrative if they were done by tricksters that were messing with us. Keel posited these characteristics to be more accurate to the reports and to what he experienced personally. He found this ultra-terrestrial idea to be a much better description of the phenomenon. So from where does John Keel think these ultra-terrestrials arrive? What does he think the common origin is? John Keel hypothesized these beings come from another dimension, which is a spectrum of energy he called the superspectrum. In his book The Eighth Tower, he stated, This superspectrum is the source of all paranormal manifestations. It is extra-dimensional, meaning it exists outside of our own space-time continuum, yet influences everything within our reality. 
Any theory involving visitation of this kind would require an entry point. Kill describes areas of high strangeness that he called window areas. These are places where he thought the ultra-terrestrials would enter our world from the super-spectrum. He said that inhabitants of the other world climb through the curtain in the areas we call windows. That, of course, includes any kind of monster, spirit, or UFO. Kill wrote, These creatures and strange events tend to occur in the same area year after year, century after century. The UFO field seemed to be lacking this kind of point to explain why certain areas have more UFO reports than others. It's very similar to the concept of a haunted area, except Kill is viewing as a form of entryway for all sorts of weird entities. Cryptozoology often theorizes about reclusive animals inhabiting or hiding out in certain areas for a variety of biological reasons. Kill comments on this by stating, The hideout theory is untenable. Posses, experienced hunters, and even helicopters have searched for these monsters immediately after some of these events, and have failed to find any trace of a hiding place. So where do they go? He continues, We have to stretch our minds a bit and expand our imaginations into the paranormal. The sudden appearance and disappearance of these wild unknown creatures all over the world even in densely populated areas, suggest they have some means of transportation. John Keel thought these manifestations could possibly enter and exit our world from hypothetical doorways or passageways in these places. He considered these weird zones to be a part of the natural environment. He once again implied these things might be related to electromagnetic energy and could be detectable by the human perception of fear. So to summarize, it seems that in Keel's personal view, spirits, demons, and angels are not dead people from an afterlife. UFOs and the associated entities are not aliens from another planet. Monsters are not undiscovered animals from our biology. He classified all these things in a different way than most researchers of his time. To him, it seems all these things are ultra-terrestrials from the super-spectrum, meaning manifested beings or entities coming from a dimension outside of our own. This seems to be how John Keel categorized the subject matter of these strange reports. He was definitely a big-picture sort of guy. He stated, It is not my intention to attack any frame of reference. Rather, I have tried to demonstrate how all these things blend together into a larger whole. He had a very unique perspective, to say the least, which is why even to this day we still try to ponder some of his ideas. Some people do it for a form of understanding. Some people do it for a simple escapism or entertainment. Whatever your reason for interest might be, you can always pick up a book and journey into the mind of John Keel.